We're with Melanie Green, assistant volleyball coach for San Diego State. And Mel, it's Sunday, so what's your favorite Bible verse? Yes, well, Key, I actually have a few, but as you know, some verses kind of speak more powerfully in certain seasons kind of of your life. So I got this one. I don't have it memorized yet, so I'm going to read it straight from God's Word, okay? So it's James 1, 2 through 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So count it all joy when you fall into various trials. I, I kind of laughed at that at first, to be honest with you, because, you know, you have to read the end of the verse to really understand God's promises, right, in the end result. But, you know, trials, we're all going through a lot of various trials right now. You know, with relationships, with this COVID, we're being kind of forced to be separated from our friends, from our family, job insecurity, you know, fear of the unknown, you know, just your disruption in your routine. So trials to me kind of right now means kind of in one word, it means crushing, right? And it's going to be some sort of pain that you're going through, you know, and what I've learned in my years of going through pain, going through crushing, number one is God is good, right? Number two is God turns that pressure into power, right? If you let him. So when I'm teaching or when I'm encouraging and reminding people about the crushing and the trials and the process, you know, I, I tell them not to be confused, you know, when the crushing precedes the soaring and soaring, I mean, experiencing his promises, you know, because if we only talk about, you know, the soaring and not the crushing, when something crushing happens in your life, it looks like what you've preached and what you've encouraged is not true. So we kind of live in a day and age where, you know, there's a lot of self-help books out there where it's like, look in the mirror, say, pump it up, baby. You know, you got this. Well, that didn't work, you know? And then you have over here in church where, you know, they're teaching you of the, the power of God and the presence of God and, you know, the healing of God, which is all true, right? All true. But sometimes we miss out on the process, right? And the crushing part and the day-to-day actual, you're, you're in it and it's hard. And so, you know, we have to realize that crushing is the process where soaring is the promise, right? And you can't have promise without process. You know, oftentimes too, I've heard, you know, that God uses the most, those people, the ones that he crushes kind of the most severely. And I think, um, you know, Tozer said it this way, that it's doubtful that God can use a man greatly until he has wounded him deeply. And honestly, Keely, I think of you in this because, you know, I have never met anyone who's done extraordinary, like great things in their life and accomplished great things that have not endured exceptional crushing. And that's you, you know, I should be, I should be, you know, interviewing you one of these days to talk about your story because, you know, you've gone through the crushing and some people just stay there. They have a hard time getting out, but you have gotten out of that crushing and you have used your gifts and talents for the Lord. And even right now, this is a perfect example. You're using your platform in whatever God's given you to do something like this. So I guess, you know, my, my end thought is, you know, don't be discouraged because you know, obviously in this verse, it says you're going to face various trials and it says it's going to have its perfect work in you that you're going to be perfect, complete and lacking nothing. And so, you know, I even think about our grapes, you know, we have grapes behind our house and, you know, we have to cut them a certain way in a certain season so that they produce more grapes. And I feel like that's how God, like we're his vineyard and that's how God kind of looks at us. You know, we're going to be cut and it's not going to feel good, right? But he has his perfect time and place that we're going to produce more wine. And, you know, whatever crushing you're in, anyone's in, I'm in, God is going to finish that perfect work in you. You know, he is not done. He is not finished with you. He has got a perfect plan for your life. Um, that Jeremiah 29, 11 is also one that's kind of stuck. You know, he is good. He is good. Um, and one thing too, Keely, let me get this out is, you know, there are trials and I feel like, you know, obviously that's what I'm talking about where God allows certain trials to come into our life to refine our conduct and character, right? That we haven't caused Job, right? But there are certain, you know, trials and consequences. There are certain crushing that comes from our own hand right? Our own sin. So that's where you repent, ask God to forgive you, done, right? But trials is, and I just want to, you know, help you understand the difference right there, because crushing can come from our own hand, and then crushing can come from actual trials that are brought onto us, right? That we didn't ask for. But through the trial, God has got us, you know, and, and I am big on practical applications. So yes, okay, we get it, there are trials. Yes, we get it that there are promises and there's a process, but how do, how do you get, you know, 
down and dirty into the process of understanding, you know, what to do, how to get to that promise. And so one of those things that I wanted to share is prayer, 100%. You know, you can't fake prayer with God. And at first it's going to be a discipline, you know, where you're coming before him and you're like, gosh, what do I even talk about? You know, but if you can make that a discipline and just come before him a few minutes and just start pleading with God and talking to him, he'll show up. You know, when you draw near to him, he's going to draw near to you. And so that's where that process, it's, it's going to go from a discipline to a yearning where, you know, you come before him and, you know, you're craving it, you know, right? Because you're seeing his goodness. And so, you know, keep praying and keep believing that God has got you, you know, don't lose hope. Don't quit on your dreams, on your vision, on your goals, because God loves you. God loves you. And he's got a plan that's perfect for you. And you're going to see it in the land of the living. Right there, Melanie Green. This is why I love you. So, when am I interviewing you? That's what I want to know. Right? <laughs> yeah. You're next. Yeah.